Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're going to do a loop-the-loop -loop type of problem. What we mean with that is we're going to have an object that's going to slide through this loop here. And we want to have it an, we want the object to have enough initial velocity so that it will not fall from the loop when it gets to the top. Now what we're going to do here is simply have an object that's sliding. On the next video, we're going to have an object that's actually rotating, so we're not going to include the rotational kinetic energy in this problem but want to see what it looks like without it first and then we're going to add that in the next video so you can see the difference between the two. The whole idea is when it gets to the top we want the centrifugal force, that fictitious force that seems to push it to the outside because of its circular motion to be greater than the weight of the object for it to stay up against the top railing like that. So what that means is when we solve that, what we want to say here is that the centrifugal force must be greater than or equal to the weight of the object. In other words, the mv squared over r must be greater than or equal to mg. First of all, we can cancel out the m's, and then we can write that v squared must be greater than or equal to r times g, or finally, that the velocity is oh, not equal to, but should be greater than or equal to the square root of r times g. We're going to take this value later and plug it into our equation to solve for the initial velocity or the minimum initial velocity necessary so that the object will not fall down. The next thing we're going to do is equate the energy in the initial state, which is down here, to the energy at the final state, which is at the top of the loop right there. Initially, we have kinetic energy at the bottom, so we can say that the kinetic energy initial must equal the combination of potential energy when it's at the top and kinetic energy when it's at the top. So it has kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Notice that the radius of the loop is r, that means that the height of the loop will be 2 times the radius or 2r. The initial kinetic energy would be 1 half mv initial squared, and that's what we're looking for, equals the final kinetic energy, which would be 1 half mv final squared, the velocity at the top, which, by the way, has to be equal to the velocity here, so we'll call this v final, and that's where the relationship comes in, plus the potential energy, which is mg times h, and in this case, h will be twice the radius, so mg times 2r. And now we're looking for v initial in terms of the minimum v final requirement. That means, first of all, again, we can cancel out all the m's, and we can multiply both sides by 2, which gives us v initial squared equals v final squared plus 2 times this, which is 4g times r. Finally, we're going to supply or substitute into Vf what Vf is equal to. Since Vf is equal to the square root of that, Vf squared is equal to r times g. So V initial squared is equal to r times g plus 4gr. Of course, r times g is the same as g times r. But in other words, V initial squared must be equal to at least 5g times r. Solving this for V initial, you can say, say V initial is equal to the square root of 5gr, and then we we'll plug the values in for that. V initial then must be at least the square root of 5 times g, which is 9.8, times the radius, which is equal to 5. Now let's see if I have a calculator here somewhere. Sure do. That means 25 times 9.8, take the square root of that, and the minimum velocity required so that the object will not fall down at the top there would be equal to 15.7 meters per second. Now we're going to remember that value, because in the next video we're going to have a rolling object doing the same thing, and again, what will be the initial velocity at the bottom in such a way that it will not fall off the top. When we have a rolling object, then that means it also has rotational kinetic energy. In this case, we didn't have any of that, and that's a much more straightforward problem that you've probably seen before. So let's go to the next video now and see what it looks like when we have a rotating object instead.